Okay, this is day two of the build. I spent about five hours yesterday and got the bottom vertex, the top vertex, which you can't see, these linear rails, the end stops with the lines threaded through to the bottom, motors, and the this end effector, which was just a nightmare. The instructions, they tell you to put the end stop in, and then they tell you to put the hot end and the wires. The hot end, the way they say to put the thing in is wrong. They say spate. They say take special care and put it in this way, and it's just wrong. It won't fit. This thing is asymmetrical, so I had to take it all out. The wires come back through here, which is not particularly obvious in the first couple pictures. It is later on, so if you read the directions all the way through in the beginning, just read them all the way through when you reach a point where the step may not make sense, you might recall, oh, that, that's that's a couple steps ahead. So I got to put the fans on here. There's another fan here, and it shoots down, and that's the park cooler. Uh, and then it's just the carbon rods. So the carbon rods, which look pretty uh, straight. I put a M3 through a couple of them and an M3 through the other end, you know, within a fraction of a millimeter they look pretty straight so it's just putting the end effect or the uh, rods on the end effector and then the uh, carriage and then once you have this piece with your you know six arms all laying around then you sort of attach them to these and then you belt them and you put the top on the top has the idle course it doesn't really tell you how to do the belt you somehow thread it through here, but there's really nothing in the instructions on how to do it. I'm going to do the fans and the carbon rods, and we'll see you when those are done. Okay, here's another problem. You're supposed to put an M3 in here and put a nut in here, and it's basically impossible to perform this action on these plastic parts. Perhaps they could be better printed, but... Uh, it just spins the nut over and over. There's, there's like no way to grab the nut to stop it from spinning and have it engage. And, and this is catching the threads. So the screw is pushing in and it's basically just pushing the nut into the plastic and I'm getting all sorts of stress marks and deformations. So this is like, a really awful design or an awful print. I, I can't tell which. Yeah. I think I'm just going to take that out and just thread it into the plastic because it's gripping enough to bore this nut into the plastic. It must be gripping enough. So who knows? So I got the fun part of it done and it moves and it makes the stepper motor noises, and I, I had to break out the Anycubic documentation. It has much better documentation on how to get this top bar on. Uh, you're supposed to thread these up through. I mean, it makes sense now, but until you see the picture and with the with the hot gun directions, it tells you to put this part on first, and then it jumps around, and it. Mm, not good. Absolutely no direction on how to put the belts on. They're, they're actually, let me show you what the problem is. If your belt, so you're going to have some left over because you just fold it. You just fold it and hook it in the teardrop. And uh, if you have just a little bit left over, it wants to, uh, you know, see, it was doing it all the time before. Yeah, right there. It, it meshes perfectly with the other side. And then it, like, locks in place, and it doesn't want to go without uh, skipping and dragging, so you're probably going to lose steps that way. Oops. So I don't know what to do with the extra, because even if there's a little bit, you know, paper clips or something, but I had tape up there. It's just an interesting problem if you have a lot of extra this this hasn't happened yet um because you have so much that it can pass off to the side 
Okay. Um, what have I done? So I added the filament extruder on top. You can't really see it. It's not a big deal. Zoop. Just a motor, motor mount, springs. They didn't give me the right spring. I may do... Or not the right spring, right screw. There's definitely only two Phillips screws in the whole thing, and one of them is not an M3. Uh, okay, so here's like an example of how bad these documents are. Here's the page that talks about the electronics. That's it. It's this one page, second to last page of the whole document. It just shows, it just says like what things are. But what you get is this, and it's on this piece of wood, and it's got these like T slot things. So you start thinking, hmm, where do I put, do I, no, no. I've, and then you think, I've seen these like inside the triangle base, right? So maybe, maybe it goes like this, maybe it goes like that. Uh, maybe it goes in between. Oh, that's kind of a tight fit. Maybe you lose some over here. Um, you know, you, there's not a whole lot of room to put anything in these screw terminals, but it's a tight fit. I'll deal with it. Right? You cannot screw these things down. Like, oh my goodness. So, could they have just said in step one, like, pick one of these? And put this stupid main board on there. I mean, if you look at the uh, any cubic docks, you'll see that their main board has the power interface right on it, and it definitely slides in between the two rails. So, hanging it in between the two rails is like a thing. Uh, I can't figure out how to do it on this model. So I uh, plugged it in just to USB just to see if I wired the LCD auxiliary up and the LCD pass through. There's nothing else going on. I did get the board in. Uh, I had just had to back those screws out a lot. Those, those nuts with the uh, twirly shape that help lock themselves into place. Just had to back those out a lot. And then I put the, uh, uh, this strange power panel on, and it doesn't work because I'm not on I'm not on real power. I'm just on the uh, bypass USB. So uh, what's left? Cable management. They don't can you use, like they don't tell you what to friggin' do with the cables. Here they are, and I got the wire things around them, but. You like you you put them in the tracks? Do you do you put them through the middle? It doesn't matter, but it does if you don't know what you're doing and you want good instructions. Uh, I mean, I guess they could just lay there, but I'm assuming they need to be propped up about halfway somewhere. There's probably something on Thingiverse. It's just <sighs> the instructions on this kit, man. I just got to finish plugging everything into the main board, plug the power supply in, uh, and clamp the bed down, and that's it. So, like, end stops and temp temperature sensors and all that stuff. There's, like, a million things I need to plug in there. Uh, since we're last talking about cable management, I saw I got a bunch of zip ties. Uh, no instructions to do them. And these springs, and I know that these are supposed to go... Uh, in between the carbon rods to add tension and all that, but uh, um, that's going to be a challenge to get those on. And then you can't really zip tie the cables to these things because then you're interrupting the linear rail. You can't you can't put anything totally around it. So still, I mean, are you supposed to use these to get? The springs on. You're supposed to use the zip ties to uh, pick up the the slack in the uh, in the belt. Like zip tie that so it stays. 
I don't know. I really don't know. Anyways, extra stuff. All right, I found something really, really bizarre. Plug an end stop in, an end stop that's for the uh, for the hot end switch. So I think it's the Z Max, and if I tip it, the whole thing resets. So I maybe I wired this wrong. There's only two wires, and it's a three prong thing. So maybe the ground has to go the other way. But what what good is resetting the entire machine when an end stop hits. Is this a bad version of Marlin or something on here? I don't know. Of course it just says whatever Hakka version 1.0 or whatever. So who knows? Uh, I guess I'm going to reflash it because it, it's not moving the motors uh, when I when I use the dial and try to control it manually, and it said like Z end stop hit, so I started plugging in some of the end stops and tripping them, and the, the whole board. Yeah. Okay, after an hour and a half of messing with the end stops, here's what I learned: the end stops are all configured to be normally closed, which means it's a closed loop, and they should all get the signal card all the time. That means if you don't plug all of them in, it's going to think that one of them is tripped and the chassis won't move or the effector, whatever it's called. It, you'll get inconsistent results. Sometimes it moves, sometimes it won't. So you need all the end stops in. Now, the switch, let me show you. So this switch for the Z, so when you hit the bottom of the bed, it's a protective switch. It wasn't wired up correctly so i think the end stop in the firmware is inverted because this switch is inverted but i needed to move uh i needed to move the red wire from the out to the inside according to the documentation. now it works correctly and if you're moving it and you touch it it'll stop and it'll say hit z end stop so and the reason everything was resetting before as i was shorting it there's five volt um, on the end stops when there's three pins on the end stop, uh, the one closest to the MCU is five volt. It's five volt ground signal. And so I've reversed the, uh, signal and ground, but it, it doesn't matter. Uh, the 5 volt is for switches that need to do something like optical switches or IR sensors. They need voltage just to run, and then they close the signal and to the ground, you know, when they activate or when they don't activate or whatever. So uh, you don't want your switch, your mechanical switch, to short 5 volt to ground. It doesn't need 5 volt because it doesn't light up an LED or an infrared or anything like that. So it's like a passive switch, and the 5 volts are for active switches. In the context of RepRap and, and, and uh, 3D printing, 5 volt is for optical sensors. Uh, I spent most of day three on this trying to calibrate it. Day three was probably another five hour affair. And let me explain to you what was so difficult. So uh, I looked up online some of these manual calibration techniques that involve entering a special G-code. And one of them didn't work. It was like 665 or 556 or whatever. It was some way to sort of say what the offset was. So you would bring it down and put a tape over it.